This is Professor Murphy from Weber State University, and today we're going to go over some database fundamentals. Uh, we're going to discuss some of the basic concepts about databases, talk about some database management systems, show you the importance of normalizing your data. We're going to show you a little bit of the language called SQL, or SQL. I've heard it pronounced both ways. Anyway, SQL is the language that most database management systems use to query your database. So databases store data. Well, what is data? Data is just the facts. For example, uh, what about you? You have your name, your age, your height, weight, birthday, whatever. These are all facts about you, and it's still data. It can be a little random, so in order to organize your data, you can use a database. A database is just organized data that's stored on a computer. A database management system, or DBMS, is a program. It manages data. Using a DBMS, you can store, retrieve, modify your data in useful ways. Uh, Microsoft SQL Server, that's a database management system. Oracle has one. MySQL is an open source database management system. Each of these have their own system for managing the data in the database. Now, a relational database consists of tables. Sometimes they're called entities. These tables consist of rows and columns, just like in Excel. And each, the columns are called fields and the rows are called records or tuples and each row is a collection of columns. The problem with table storing your data is it doesn't really hold the data as nicely as you think it would. Uh, let's give you an example uh, to demonstrate. Suppose you have a student table that you're going to list some data for a student. You got first name, last name, teacher, class, grade. Alright, let's put in some data now. Maybe Ada Byram is taking my class. And Grace Hopper's taking Professor Hilton's 1400 class. Well, so far it looks okay, right? No big deal. Well, whoops, now maybe Grace Hopper's taking my class as well. Well, we better put that information somewhere, but there's just one cell. Okay, I'll add it in here, just, you know, at least we have the information. Could be confusing, though. How do you tell which professor is teaching which class? Who got the A? You know, so we better normalize the data. Normalizing is just the process of illuminating duplications and inconsistencies in your data. Okay, let's fix this data so it fits into the table. We'll just put each record in and add in the names. So this is now what's called first normal form, or 1NF. It's the first step in normalizing your data. Okay, we need to assign what's called a primary key. Primary key is just a field that uniquely identifies the row, record, or tuple. Here at Weber State, it's your W number. You can always use your W number anytime they're trying to identify you. Oh, what's your W number? Well, oh, we can't do that in this case because Grace and Edith are listed in the table twice. So instead, we're going to use what's called a composite key. A composite key is just when you have more than one field that identifies the record. In this case, the W number and the class. So now we're going to set up our data to be in second normal form. To do this, we need to see and make sure that every column is what's called functionally dependent on the primary key. That means for every uh, W number you have, you can identify the person's first, last name, that sort of thing. So let's see how this goes. Yeah, first name we know is dependent on the primary key. You know somebody's W number, you know the first name. Same with the last name. Now the class is a little different. It's not really functionally dependent. Just because you know their W number doesn't know, mean you know which class you're referring to. And a class might have more than one student. This is not a functional dependency. All right, now we've found which fields are not functionally dependent. We are ready to put the tables into second normal form, or 2NF. We can split up the table into two tables. And we'll have a student table and a class schedule table. In the student table, we'll have put the first and the last name. They're both functionally dependent on the W number. Therefore, W number is the primary key. In our schedule table, we'll have a W number and the class. They both combine together to form a composite key. And the teacher is based upon that composite key. Therefore, this is now in second normal form. Second normal form is when each field is functionally dependent on the key. To prepare for third normal form, we're going to look for transitive dependencies. A transitive dependency is when one item is dependent on another item in the field that's not the primary key. In this case, we have the teacher. 
Murphy's teaching CS 1030. Well, that's the only thing I'm teaching, so it kind of works out in this situation. But let's take a look at Professor Hilton. He's probably teaching other classes and other subjects. And there might be more than one Professor Hilton, which is true here at Weber State. We remove the transitive dependencies by adding another table, of course. Uh, we add a new primary key called course ID. Now the class and the teacher are both dependent upon the course ID. We still have the schedule table, which determines which student is taking which class. So this is now in third normal form, or 3 and F. Now each table has a primary key. The schedule table has a composite key, or a key made up than more, with more than one field. A foreign key exists when a field references another field that exists as a primary key in another table. For example, the course ID. The course ID is referenced in both the courses and the schedule table. The course ID is a primary key in the courses table, and it's a foreign key in the schedule table. As you create the tables in the database, it's important to notice the relationship between the tables. You might have one record that correlates with several records in another table. You might have a one-to-one -one relationship. You might have many Items in one table might relate to many items in another table. You just want to kind of take note of the relationships. Here we have an ER model of the student database. Uh, it's an entity relationship diagram. That's what the ER model stands for. And notice that every student might have multiple classes. So this is a one-to-many relationship. In the student table, we have the first name, and that correlates with the W number, that's a one-to-one -one relationship. Anytime you have a one-to-one -one relationship, you might want to consider placing those items in the same table as we've done with the student table. When you first decide on creating a database, there's a few things you need to investigate before actually creating the database. First, you want to gather the information and, and investigate and define all of the fields you might have for your table. Next, you create a master column list of all the fields you'll need. Uh, list any properties you might need, such as, well, is it a text, going to be text value or a numeric value? Would you use a date? Is there going to be some sort of long text field that they're going to be typing stuff in? Uh, thirdly, you want to actually create the tables, not necessarily in the database, but just uh, logically. Um, follow the rules of normalization. Put them all in one table at first, and then look for your functional dependencies as needed. Uh, you want to work out any relationships you have. Find, see if something is one-to-one. -one. Then maybe put that in the same table. Analyze your de design and reevaluate. Go back to the first step. Make sure your data is going to fit in the schema. Of course, since this is a computer science class, there has to be code that goes along with this database. The language that we're going to be doing is called SQL, or sometimes they call it SQL. It stands for Structured Query Language. This coding allows you to manipulate, add to data to the database. And the commands we're going to show you today will allow you to create a table. You'll be able to insert information into the table. We'll do a basic select statement that lets you actually get information out of the table um, and stuff like that. Now, before we actually create the table, we need to kind of investigate some of the, the fields for the table. Uh, remember we said that in the last step in the des database design process that you had to write down some properties, such as, is the field going to be number or text? Well, it's actually a little bit more complex than that, of course. Uh, there's a f These are only a few types that the fields could possibly be. You've got care and var care are text values stands for character and var character, variable length character. Int, they're whole numbers, number, decimals. There's date, I think there's some time and long text and others. These are just a couple that are mentioned in the book. Okay, here is the first command. The create table statement has the following syntax. You always say create table and then you name it whatever it is. In this case, it's the students table. Just change students out if you're making a different table. Uh, the fields are in parentheses and the command ends with a semicolon. So all of the fields have the same format. You start with the field name, whatever you want to name it. Uh, keep it simple. Don't put any spaces or weird punctuation in it. Underscore is okay. Then you have to remember back on that chart on the previous slide. Is it going to be a text or a number? In this case, we're going to do 
Ver fair care, varchar. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but it stands for variable character. So in this case, uh, it's for our W number, so it can hold up to 30 characters. But for the W number, really, since it's all the same length, we could probably do just a care, but I wanted to keep it simple and only use a few data types on this one. So the last section is it's either null or not null. This just means that are we going to allow no value in this table? or are we going to force them to always have a value in here? So not null means that you're not going to accept empty values. Null means not empty. Not null means not empty. I'm getting this backwards in my head. Uh, null means no value. So not null means you're not going to not have no value. Anyway, you could put null if you're willing to accept empty values. <laughs> Here's an example of the command used to put data into the table. Insert into, and then whatever table you want, in this case it's the courses table, you have to have the keyword val values. And then those have got the same parentheses again with the same semicolon as the create statement. Then you want to make sure you insert the same amount of values that the table has fields. In our table, we only have three fields, so ins we're inserting three values. If your table has more fields, you'll want to insert more values. Uh, you're going to separate each of the fields with a comma, and then the last field doesn't have a comma after it. Now, in this case, the ID is in the courses table, was the number data type, so it's not in quotes. Now, class and name were text in as far as the data type goes, so we have to put those in single quotes. Anytime you have something that's text, it goes in quotes. Anytime you have numbers, it's not in quotes. And it's all dependent upon what the data type that you specify when you create the table. Okay, this is a basic select statement. It says select star from courses. It's going to select star means everything. So select everything from whichever table you want. The courses table, it could be select star from students, whatever you name the table. Select A select choice statement is narrowing down the amount of columns that you're going to get in the table. In this case, it's only going to get the first and last name from the table. It's not going to display the W number in the results. The WHERE claw is used with the SELECT statement and a few other statements that we're not going to get into in this course. The WHERE clause limits the amount of rows you're going to receive back in your results. I have two examples for you here. So the first is showing the rows for the CS1400 class. So it says SELECT STAR from courses where the class is CS1400. You notice the quotes around the CS1400. This is because it was text. Remember we de defined it as a varchar kind of field. So anytime you have a varchar it's going to require single quotes. The second I have SELECT STAR from course where the course ID is 2. In this case the data type was an int, a numer numeric data type. So we're not going to have the quotes around it. In the second select statement, since we're doing a select on the primary key, course ID is the primary key of the courses table, we're only going to have one result, and that's because, remember, the primary key uniquely identifies that particular tuple in the field. The order by clause specifies that you want the results in a particular order, in this case by the last name, but you could do the first name or whatever field you want. You can also mix and match all of these commands in any way you want to fit the data that you want to view from the database. In this case, we're selecting the first and last name where the last name is Jones, but we're ordering by the first name. Realistically, in the tiny database that we have, we don't have anyone with Jones as their last name, so we would get zero results. But it's an example. Your book doesn't go deep into the SQL, so it doesn't do any table jo joins at all, but I wanted to show you it could be done. So here's a simple join, and it uses all of the tables in our little database. It selects just a few fields from all three tables. So instead of getting all the information back, it, there's a WHERE clause, so we're only getting data back where the student number matches the student number of the, the schedule table, and the schedule ID matches the course ID, so we're just going to get information where there's a relationship. So in this case, it shows a complete schedule with the first and last names of the students and the teacher that they have. To finish up, I saw this SQL query on a t-shirt and I thought it was pretty funny, so I thought I'd share. Good luck on the database homework.